Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we return to talking about the long-awaited and much-anticipated Batman spin-off movie called The Joker. Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, finally released this past weekend and it's making even more money than many anticipated, setting box office records for October. Yes, the premiere has been doing gangbusters at the theaters, and perhaps this is why people still can't stop talking about this thing. Much like before, too, the liberal-run mainstream media is going after this Joker film hardcore. They previously called it an ode to incest cells, even claiming the movie could end up causing incidents at the theaters where it premieres. Fortunately, no major disasters happen yet, as far as I know, so this has resulted in the press pushing forward with more attacks on the film. Honestly, I think they were seeding the idea of an attack happening previously, basically trying to make it happen because the left truly wants this film to fail for a number of reasons. First, it's a dark, rated R, non-politically correct movie, and that's something the soft and sensitive social justice warriors have railed against for years now. But all also, as the film comes out and more details on the plot points have surfaced, we can clearly see there were other unknown ulterior motives for the leftists attacking this thing. Basically, before we get into too many details about the movie, the left hates this film because the story and its creators are mocking them greatly and exposing the radicalness and dangerousness of their side immensely too. Joker's director has even been making the rounds in interviews, trying to defend his picture from the whack and out of touch politically correct police who think they can tell us what is and isn't okay as far as movie premises and performances are concerned. For example, here's an article from Maxim where Joker's director Todd Phillips says he quit making comedies because of woke culture, following that up with a line about how this director of Old School and The Hangover says he doesn't make comedies anymore because people are too easily offended these days. This makes a lot of sense too. Todd's last full-blown comedy was The Hangover 3, which came out all the way back in 2013, right on the cusp of this recent wave of SJW-influenced woke culture becoming more prevalent. Pretty much anything after Obama's second term started in 2012, well, things have changed a lot since then. You can no longer get away with extreme comedies like The Hangover series, which got its start by basing a story off of four guys who get drugged and end up mixing it up with nefarious characters in Las Vegas while blacked out because of it. And sure, when the first Hangover film came out in 2009, we were still okay to make jokes, take risks, and have fun with our art back then. But by 2013, America's culture had changed drastically. Back then is when the radical left-wingers began to overthrow and lock down everything. And despite us finally getting some pushback recently, particularly starting when Trump was elected in 2016, well, despite that, this is all still a work in progress. SJWs and far leftists still control large swaths of the media, big tech, and academia, and parts of the government too. So, we still have a long way to go and a harsh battle to fight here to finally combat that and get this country back on the right non-PC track. And, while Mr. Phillips isn't making raunchy comedies anymore, which is rather sad because some of his funny films are some of my favorites of all time, but at least he is still working. And he's also making something that matters and something that still rails against the left-wingers in many ways. Joker still fits in with Todd's anti-PC streak too, and it's probably the best direction for a director like him to go now. As he said in interviews, Phillips Phillips wanted to make a great movie here under the guise of it being a comic book film. So really, when you think about it, Joker is just using the Batman character as a vehicle and as a way to get people's initial attention. Comic book based films are all the rage right now after all. So taking that premise and then spinning off into something actually deep and dark and interesting and referential, well that was really a genius move and a master stroke on this filmmaker's part. And despite it not being an anti-PC comedy like the director's previous works, it's still anti-PC as hell. And now that the film released, the general consensus among actually non-biased viewers is the Joker movie is excellent and it actually mocks far leftists and woke PC cancel culture in many ways. But before we get into the movie's plot too much, let's first hear from the director some more and see why he left the comedy world, which is discussed further in this article. Joker director Todd Phillips, who shot to fame directing classic R-rated comedies like Old School and The Hangover, says today's woke culture is no laughing matter when it comes to making funny movies for mainstream audiences. In a recent interview, interview with Vanity Fair, Phillips said he stopped making comedy movies because people are too easily offended these days. Go try to be funny nowadays with this woke culture, Phillips said. There were articles written about why comedies don't work anymore. I'll tell you why. Because all the funny guys are like, screw this, because I don't want to offend you. It's hard to argue with 30 million people on Twitter. You just can't do it, right? So you just go, I'm out, and you know what? With all my comedies, I think that what comedies in general all have in common is they're irreverent. Well put, Mr. P. And I think this is pretty obviously true, too. Especially 
especially recently. We do live in a time where comedians can barely make comedy specials anymore without getting dunked on by the lamestream media. Dave Chappelle, of course, comes to mind as a good example of this. And much like with the Joker movie, Dave's recent release got rallied against by hack liberal reporters and movie reviewers, despite real people and audiences actually loving his comedy special. Another example of this is comedian Louis C.K., who has to secretly announce his latest stand-up gigs because the woke karate PC police and the media are still coming after the guy since he got Me Too'd a few years back. And Louis initially got into hot water for having consensual acts of sex with consenting adults and colleagues. But that doesn't stop the PC press from coming after you. For years and years to come, under the guise of doing what's right, when really, we all know they hate CK because he's too funny and his comedy's too relevant and anti-PC. And it rails against radical leftists too much too. And back to the present, Joker director Todd Phillips is getting similar backlash now from the mainstream media too. As this next article shows, they are actually trying to deny that SJWs have killed comedy, oddly enough, and their defense of that stance is rather laughable too, to say the least. This article from Bleeding Cool claims woke culture didn't kill comedy, then saying, if anything, it's shown that comedians can survive if they're able to adapt to modern times, meaning they have to kowtow to the left-wingers and make their comedy PC and lame. If you want to make woke comedy that's terrible and adhere to these PC principles exactly and specifically, well, then the left-wingers and the media will still support you, and they'll prop you up despite your material not being that funny. And this almost never plays out well, and especially, these woke comics are never actually popular with the people in the public like us. Bleeding Cool's examples of this just go to prove that, despite them trying to prove their own whack points. They prove our own. This part of the article says, comedians still work, case in point, Jojo Rabbit just took home the big prize during the recent Toronto International Film Festival. If YTT weren't Jewish, the film wouldn't hit with the same edge that it does. Nice identity politics there. I liken the film to the great satires on this particular genre, the producers, the great dictator, and to be or not to be. I said as much last month when I wrote my review, I guess if you're Jewish and a total shill like YTT, you're still hilarious and your comedy is okay, according to the humorous droll losers on the left. Never heard of any of these movies mentioned here though, and the rest of this article isn't any more promising either. Later, they even prove one of my earlier points when the writer rails against Todd Phillips' previous film, The Hangover Part 2, even calling it transphobic for daring to make jokes about those kinds of characters. Then, Dave Chappelle is unironically brought up again here, and he's even called anti-trans too, even though clearly none of these people are. They're not scared of trans, and they're not anti them either. They're just funny people from a different era, and they're refusing to kowtow to modern PC, extremely sensitive left-wing sensibilities. And Bleeding Cool condemning these actually funny people in ways I already predicted earlier, while also praising hacks who pander to them, well, it just goes to show we are all right here, and the left has truly ruined comedy for the public. At least they're trying their best to. But thankfully, great artists and bold ones and brave ones like Phillips and Chappelle, they're still doing their damnedest to keep that dream alive. Finally, let's wrap things up by talking more about the Joker movie specifically, because not only is this director coming out against the far left in interviews, but also the film itself goes up against them within its actual narrative. Won't be spoiling too much here, just giving you some summaries and plot points so you can see what I'm talking about. For example, this tweet and attached article talks about how masked agents of chaos spread lies and fear in order to control the masses. It's not incels, it's the outrage media. And with that said, it's pretty clear who the actual mass offenders in this world are and who's being mocked in this movie. It's not guys who can't get dates, who are marching in the streets with masks, trying to scare people into listening to their radical ideologies. No, clearly it's the left and their radical Antifa army who's actually doing that. And that's the kind of group who is supporting Joker within its movie too. And this makes sense as well, given all this anti-left PC stuff we've seen the director saying earlier. And also, this makes even more sense considering the press is the one who's being ridiculed here, and they're the ones who have been against this movie from the get-go. So the media isn't actually against the film because it could incite violence at all. They're actually attacking Joker because it mocks them, and exposes the worst things that could happen because of their radical rhetoric and their violent ways. Next, Tim Poole says, The Joker was a masterpiece. The media began turning on it after latching onto tweets about incels. The director blamed the far left and later woke outrage. Critics now call it bad, and there the cycle is complete. A pretty succinct and telling summary of the events surrounding this film's release, and one that confirms all our suspicions about this too. Next, Poole also adds, Just saw Joker. It's amazing. Oddly enough, Joker supporters are literally Antifa. Wow. Just wow. So it sounds like the press was wrong about this movie completely, and for good reason. They are the same kinds of left-wingers, and they support the same kinds of violent protesters who this film is making a mockery of. This is the real reason liberals are triggered by Joker, clearly. Finally, this line from the film's Wikipedia page also reveals something interesting about the project. It says, The film
film follows Arthur Fleck, a mentally ill, failed stand-up comedian who turns to a life of crime and chaos in Gotham City. And this really reminds me again of Todd Phillips and the Dave Chappelle side of this story. Those guys are two comedians in a way. While not mentally ill, they are certainly going a bit crazy since their careers of making people laugh with irreverent humor have recently been met with undeserved attacks and false criticisms in current year. This really makes it seem like Phillips was chosen and wanted to direct this Joker project because he actually identifies with the character in many ways. Comedy is certainly being challenged greatly by leftists in current year, but thankfully, projects like Dave Chappelle's comedy special and this Joker movie, they are still succeeding immensely despite SJW opposition. What do you guys think? Have you seen Joker yet? Does this story surprise you, with the villain being supported by Antifa characters and violent protesters? And do you think it actually deserves all this backlash, or are mainstream media reporters just butthurt they're the ones getting called out here? Comment your thoughts on everything below, and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.